A king enigma. Okay, d4. All right. Well, let's let's go with d5, which is mainly what we've been focusing on in the speedrun. And I want to play the queen's gamut decline because I want to steer the game into positional waters. Hopefully, I'll be able to demonstrate what you know winning positionally at this level requires. So we're going to revert back to what we started the speedrun with. Not the most interesting opening, but um, obviously this is the gold standard for solid responses to 1d4. And it's existed forever, and nobody's even come close to refuting it. Okay, CD. So this leads to us... And knight takes d5 is, is a variation of the semi tarash which we're not going to play. It's a totally different structure. Does anybody know what this structure is called? There's a name for this variation, and more broadly this uh, somewhat imbalanced structure. It's called the Karlsbad. It's, as far as I know, named after a city in Germany where this structure was reached uh, in a bunch of tournaments in, in the early 1900s. And you know, I think probably books have been written on the Karlsbad. I could talk for hours and hours about the ideas um, of this structure. So anything I do in this game will be a pitiful, pitifully inadequate explanation. But what I'm going to do is kind of relatively quickly make a bunch of standard Carlsbad moves. And then after the game, I'm going to give you a little bit of context. So the first thing we want to do is go C6, which I think most of you can understand. We want to reinforce the D5 pawn. And the Carlsbad, this dark squared bishop, sometimes goes to D6, but generally goes to E7. Okay, it stops the pin. And uh, this is generally going to be the square. Now, we can throw an H6 at any moment, but it's not uh, obligatory. So we're just going to continue developing with castles. And then, of course, bishop d3. So now we want to be a little bit careful. White is threatening. Bishop takes f6. So we start with knight bd7, reinforcing the other knight. And then as in the Ruy Lopez and as in many, many other defenses and, and openings, where is this knight ultimately going to go? Where is this knight ultimately going to go? At one of two squares. Yeah, so either g6 or e6, and in order to accomplish both, we need to slide the rook over to e8 and then play knight f8. Now, notice that from f8, it also defends the pawn on h7, so we're not allowing bishop takes f6 and bishop takes h7. Rook a1, white knows, so so this this guy knows uh, all, of the, all of the main moves. Now, the setup that I like the most is actually putting the knight on e6, but in order to do that, we need to throw in h6, because if we don't, Knight e6, there's, again, bishop takes f6. And after the game, I'll show some of the alternative setups here. So knight e6, we get the knight into the center. Yeah, we block the bishop a little bit, but we can also uh, fianchetto it. Okay, f3. So white is preparing e4, which is, again, correct. This is white's main idea. Now, black has a couple of tools uh, that can be used to counteract that idea. The main one is to push c5 at the right moment and create counterplay on the queen side. You can also play b5, b4, and get counterplay this way. I'm not a specialist by any means in the Carlsbad, so what I do here with black should be taken with quite a grain of salt. We can go c5 immediately here, but I think it's important to point out that e4 is not yet a threat, as far as I can tell, because d4 will happen, and then the pawn on d4 is going to hang. So I think we have time to go b6 and prepare c5 or potentially even Fianchetto, the bishop first, and then play c5. Bishop g3. So still e4 is not a threat, because still the, the d4 pawn hangs. So let's get our bishop out first, and on the next move we'll almost certainly go c5. Yeah, we can harass the bishop, but then the bishop will drop back to f2. Okay, so let's go c5, enough procrastinating. And it kind of self-explanatory why, you know, this is a good move. It creates tension in the center, and it distracts white's attention away from... The center. So bishop b5. Now this bishop is annoying, so let's uh, drop our knight back to d7 and, and dislodge it. Or at least try to dislodge it. Rook d1. Okay, this is where I think our opponent is starting to go slightly off the rails. That's a weird move. I mean, it allows knight takes bishop, which kind of ruins white's structure. Now, I think I understand what, what, what our opponent's trying to go for, which is potentially f4, f5. So not, not a dumb idea, actually. So we, we, we definitely have to be careful about this. Um, now what we're going to do is the following. We're going to get our queen to c7, escaping the x-ray. That x-ray was annoying. Bishop. Oh. 
No, but knight d5, we have queen takes d5. I don't think that's an issue. I don't think that's an issue. I honestly didn't see this. Now, we have bishop takes d5 and g6. But who can tell me what annoying idea white has in that resulting position? I think a lot of people forget that this is a thing. So bishop d5, rook d5, g6. It does trap the bishop. But white can sacrifice the bishop for three pawns. Bishop takes g6, fg, queen g6. Our king is wide open. And uh, it, it gets quite annoying. Okay. Ooh, that's a good move. That is a very good move. Well, we have to drop our queen back. Probably to b8. I mean, we don't have any other squares. I still think we're very solid here. Bishop back to e4. Well, he's given us an opportunity to preserve our bishop, so let's preserve our bishop. Bishop f8. Knight g3. Okay. Now what we're going to do, and again, I have to speed up a little bit because he's playing very well, and I don't want to lose on time. We're going to go b5, c4, and then try to get a knight to c5. Knight c3. Okay. Well, we can play a6 to defend the pawn, but knight takes b5 is not a threat. So we can continue with our plan. Thank you, Nifa. Knight b5, we play bishop takes c4 and queen b5. Rook d7. Ooh, forgot about that. Um, Well, bishop takes bishop, knight takes. And then I guess rook e7. This is not ideal. Okay, let me think. So knight c5, rook f7. Yeah, he's certainly playing like Carl. I guess we have to go rook e7 here. I don't like king g8 because that, that keeps his rook on the 7th. He takes it. That's weird. I don't think that's correct. f5. Oh, he wants to play f6. I think this guy is speedrunning. Wait, knight g5? Is this actually good? No, I mean, obviously I'm... This is obviously sus. I, I, I don't know if I'm, like, truly... Sus I mean, I, I don't know if I is playing well. I can't tell. But I know... Okay, so takes, takes. Is this so good for white? Takes, like... Whoa. H4... If this is best, then uh, that's a telltale sign. But wait a second. No, but knight h7, I mean, is this so good? Oh, he's won his, he's also won his last 15 games. Um, okay, let's go queen e8. I don't know. I, I don't get the sense that I'm playing an engine. I mean, I kind of do, but I, I don't get the sense that I'm getting blown off the board. Although I kind of am. No, already the fact that this guy knew all of the key Carl's bad ideas is already like extremely unusual for this level, but not impossible. What if he studied it? So as usual in these cases, we'll investigate the game. No need for any accusations at this moment. There's no need to just say anything right now. We'll we'll look at the game. And I'll make the determination based on evidence. Oh my god, rook b2, there's rook c8, king g7, knight f5, king g6, and g4 with mate. No, I, I said it's sus. Enough. Moving on. Let's try to play the game as best I can, and then we'll look afterward. What I'm saying is, it's not not sus. It is. But there's no need to keep repeating it. And I, I would like us to focus on the game instead. Now, I'm not... I don't feel like White is playing this ideally, to be honest. I'm going to offer a draw, see what happens. Declined. Okay. Okay, but wait, now takes. Now, knight f6, rook b2, I think. And then rook b8. It goes rook f7? No, but this is not perfect. I think we can go here. Okay. I should be able to draw this. Although, with the way that he's playing in the time situation, I, I don't know. If he moves this rook, it's going to be super sus. Because then, no, he goes g3. Yeah, obviously the four seconds of move is like an extremely telltale sign. Okay, so we're going to push our pawn. This knight is a very good defender, actually. This knight is a great defender. 
Ooh, taking his time. Look at that. King F1, really, Riley. Okay, knight f5, threatening mate, or threatening to win my knight. So I have to go either king g8 or knight f8. Probably should go knight f8. Okay. Keep pushing. Okay, wait, let me think. So now we can go here again. Check. Ah, King F2 is correct. Okay, let's just push this A2. I don't know if this is good or not, but we're just going to push this to A2. If he doesn't take, I'll be sussed out. Okay. Okay, let's go here. Okay, now the thing is this. The thing is this. If white moves their king to g2, then we go rook e1. If he moves his king to e2, then we have rook h1. And then rook h2 check. I mean, I can hold this, I think. Let me think. Okay, check maybe. Just hoping for a mouse slip at this point. I mean, it's obvious. No, Rook H1, there was Knight covering on G2. And I'm, I'm proud that I lasted as long as I did, honestly. And he's... There's definitely some moves that White is playing which are not best. Although maybe they are, I don't know. Dude, no, this is an amazing technique. Rook A8 and... <laughs> LMAO. I mean, he really shouldn't make it that obvious if he's going to do this. And he's going to think on Rook A7 exactly the same amount of time. This guy is not an experienced cheater. I actually said, dude, don't make it so obvious, and he responded, loser. <laughs> Look at him spending, like, the same amount of time on rook takes she 4 Okay. GG. Okay, well, I don't love putting these on YouTube, but let's analyze for the sake of YouTube. Ugh. Ridiculous. I mean, people are just absurd. My accuracy was not so bad. Okay, so this is the Carlsbad. Yeah, and by the way, for cheating review, I don't use the, the, the thing that tells you whether it's best or not. I use this interface because it tells you the top three moves. Okay, so rook c1, c5, bishop e5 is correct. Or like one of the top three moves. Okay, rook d1 is not... Correct. Um, actually, it's the third move. It was. Oh, it's the second move. Oh my god. Oh, it's the first move. Oh my god. Rook CD1. Okay, this is already like insane. Um. Yep. Correct. F4 is correct. Okay. Yeah. I mean, this guy did not try to not make it obvious. Knight C3 is up there. It's number. It's number two. You can see it was number two briefly. Rook d7 is top. This is top too. And top, top. Okay, yeah. No, I mean, this is... And h4 is also the top move. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, it's so obvious. Queen e4, I mean, there's even nothing. There's simply nothing. I mean, I, I survived this pretty well. You know, I got this into an endgame, which I could have drawn. Rooks, yeah. And literally every move this guy cheated on. I think at maybe around this point, 
No, but still, I mean, G3 is top. Okay, maybe King F1. Oh, King F1 is number three. Everything is top three moves. I mean, I almost drew this game. F, I should have gone F5. This is a, this was hasty. And 93 is correct. This was hasty. Knight C2 is top move. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we're reporting him, obviously. All right. Yeah, it's the time usage doesn't matter, by the way, guys. It's that's not the defining feature. But yeah, trust me, that this guy will not last more than a day. I actually played very well. I mean, given who I was up against, I found some some good ideas. But yeah, first loss, the speed run. Uh, I quickly understood. You know, if I'm honest with you guys and. I, I, I present it differently for YouTube and stuff. I, I, I'm i suspicious long before I say that I'm suspicious because I don't like... It's very important to err on the side of caution here. And I think it's important to instill a, a culture in chess of, like, not... Of gathering evidence, but... Already here, I was suspicious because most people in the 1700s do not know, like, all of the right ideas in the Carlsbad. Um, so that's incredibly uncommon. And then when Rook CD1 happened, I was like, okay, he's definitely cheating. Thank you, Lexine. Anyways, um...